and welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel here tonight, guys. And I've got to be completely honest with you. I am absolutely gutted. I am absolutely, I'd say, heartbroken. It feels as though my heart has been ripped out by this game. That's the way that it felt. We had this right where we wanted it. We were in the perfect position. Everything was looking good. What on earth has happened here? How have we ended up? I mean, I know how we've ended up here. I know that. But we're going to come on to it. But I just cannot believe. I just cannot believe how this has gotten away. I can't believe how we've let it get away from us. PSG 4-1. Where has this come from? How? How have we allowed it to happen when we were in such a strong position? Such a big, big advantage that we had in this game. Oh, we're going to be talking all about it. And we've got to talk. I need to talk to somebody. So please, guys, stick with me here. We're going over the game. No matter what. Let's do this. Because let's start with the starting lineup. And let's go step by step here, guys, because I think it's important to analyze the entire night because things were looking good. We started the game there with a good team from Chaffee. He didn't change much from the first leg. Why would you when things work so well? We played pretty much the same team with only Pedri there replacing the injured Sergio Roberto. Good team. Then there was PSG who again didn't drastically change all that much. Zaire Emery came into midfield but the big problem for us was Barkala. He actually came out to the left hand side and Mbappe was down the middle. Dembele started from the right but the big threat in the end turned out to be Barkala on the outside making inside runs but as you can see right here this is how we started the game now by the way we were stuck in our own half PSG were all over us in those early stages but it wasn't actually that bad you know they had a lot of the ball we were sitting quite deep in the field they had a real territorial advantage they were camped in our half for probably 12 minutes of the opening stages of the game but like I say, we were dealing with them. Because actually, you had Araujo there, who was one-on-one -on -one against Mbappe. He was following him everywhere across the field, and he was matching him. You had Kubasi putting in challenges. You had Kunde who was doing well. And even Cancelo there was able to withstand Dembele for a period on our left side. So things actually were okay. Yeah, PSG had the ball. We were under a bit of pressure. But with 11 men on the field, we were handling them. We had the game in our control. And then... We scored. Then we had liftoff in this match. We then took the game to PSG. Yamal shreds Nuno Mendes. Wonderful piece of play. Centers the ball. Beautiful ball in. Comes off Rafinha's shin. Who cares? We have the lead. Absolutely wonderful there. And with only 13 minutes gone in the game, we had a two-goal advantage. The tie was ours. We had everything right here the way we would have wanted it. We had the crowd behind us. We had PSG on the back foot psychologically because they started the game well. They were really trying to put pressure on us. Then we went down the other end. We'd scored. And we were getting more chances too. It wasn't just that one there. We were looking crisp. We were looking efficient. Every player there was winning the ball back, giving absolutely everything. And Lewandowski, by the way, what a chance. 20 minutes into the game here. It actually comes from Araujo of all people winning the ball back from Mbappe high up the field, he was looking good Rafinha then plays it into the box and Lewandowski's there, he smashes it at goal, I don't think it needed that much power, flies over the bar in the end flashes over, that could have been 2-0 that could have been a different game but I still maintain we were looking good, things were looking positive and especially there looking at Yamal he was having a bit of joy on that side there, he had the real beating of Mendes for the goal and that was even more of a problem as we went on because we ended up losing him. And the reason that we ended up losing him, and the reason this entire game changed, I just don't know what Araujo's thinking. I really do not know what he is thinking in this position. I, I still can't believe it now. I'm literally covering my eyes. Because why? Why would you do that in that position? And I love Araujo. As a defender, he is an absolute warrior. He's the guy that you'd want in a game like this. But just don't do it. You can't get back. You can't actually get there and save it. So don't. Just leave it alone. Because even if we can see there, so what? We've got 11 men. We're playing well. We're feeling good. We have a two-goal advantage in the game. Don't lose a man. Don't go down to 10 men. Don't shred the whole game on that one action. And I would say as well, there's not a great deal of contact here. Barkala throws himself to the floor. I mean, obviously he does. Araujo there says that he only went in with his shoulder. I thought, to be honest, it was going to be given as a penalty, but he gets sent off. That's the end of it. We could talk all day about whether it should have been, whether it shouldn't be, but all we know right now, it changed the game. That one moment from Araujo. I hate that it's happened. I hate that it's on him. It really 
really feels horrible because he is a player that we absolutely love. But it was an absolute nightmare situation because then not only do you go down to 10, but then we've got to sacrifice somebody. And then we have to take off Lamin Yamal, which in that one instance smashes our attack to pieces because then you take off real pace, real threat. You leave Lewandowski and Rafinha, who then was so isolated. We were never getting the ball anywhere near them. It couldn't stick up front. So what that meant was you take off your mouth and you retreat. From that moment on, it was a 100% negative mindset from Barca because often when you go down to 10, that's what you've got to do. We sat back. We were so deep in the field and PSG, they could just take us apart piece by piece at their own time because there was no threat no threat at all going the other way they could come forward they could commit players there was nothing going the other way that could hurt them and it was just a matter of time at that point because yeah of course for half time they do get the equalizing goal on the night Barkala again down the left hand side he found space at really key important moments of this game he drives it across goal to the back post and as you can see there Cancelo he just loses Dembele it's a lapse in concentration that really hurts us because Dembele gets to that ball first he's got a big big space in the net to aim at and it was almost written in the stars wasn't it Dembele today had a very very bad reception from Barcelona fans we were all quite angry with him of course he scores again he has three goals this season two of them are against Barcelona I mean what on earth what is even happening right now I do not know but at half time like I say it felt inevitable when we went down to 10 once PSG then got themselves back in the game you just thought when's that next goal coming and the thing is we were thinking it as fans but I almost feel as though the players were thinking the same thing. The mindset tonight, it just didn't feel good. It didn't feel as though there was real belief in there. And then you look at the Vitinha goal, nobody closes him down. We're so deep, you know, we're so focused there on just planting ourselves in our own box, making ourselves nice and compact, that when he gets the ball on the edge of the box, nobody goes out to him. Lewandowski goes out there with such a half-hearted attempt to actually block that ball. And before we know it, PSG have the lead in the game. It's flash past Ter Stegen, 2-1 on the the night, but Gundogan had an attempt at goal. He hits the outside of the post. I mean, of course he does. Every single moment tonight that was sort of 50-50 that could have gone for us, could have gone against us, it went against us. Every single moment, none of it, absolutely none of it, went in our favour. And then, of course, things started to boil over. Now, you look over at Xavi, and I understand why he's frustrated. The referee tonight, as we're going to go on to talk about, he was an absolute nightmare. I know he's angry, but I just don't know if that sent out a good message to the players there. To look over at your coach, and he's lost the plot. He's kicking things around. He's very, very angry. Like I say, I get that. But I just think at that point then, to lose our coach as well, to get him sent off, and then we're in real trouble. Then it feels as though everybody's heads are gone. And then we see evidence of that. Because what Cancelo is thinking here, I don't know. I do not know. What you, Again, I'm covering my eyes in horror. What are you thinking? Dembele is going away from goal. He is absolutely no danger to us there. Nothing's happening. You don't need to commit yourself. You don't need to go over there and force that challenge. He flies into him. It's like he wanted to get back at Dembele or something. I'll just take him out. This is a Champions League quarterfinal. We're not on a Sunday playing with our mates. I just could not believe that he made that tackle. And of course, it's a penalty. And of course, Mbappe is going to score. And there it's 3-1 PSG. And I think you only have to look really at Dembele's reaction to that Cancelo tackle. He's laughing. He's literally smiling. He went off the field as well when he was taken off smiling. He can't believe he's fooled Cancelo into making that tackle. That he's actually managed to tease him into making it. He could not believe it that he fell for that. But you know what I find extraordinary? You know what I find the most anger fueling moment from this game? None of the PSG goals. You know, at the end of the day, we're down to 10. Not good. Everybody's lost their head. That's fine. This referee... What is he doing? The whole game and the VAR team, the whole lot of them. What are they doing? Because Gundogan here, he's brought down in the box. Now, let's just make one thing clear. Let's be fair on both sides. If Ronald Araujo is adjudged to have brought down Barkala, if there's enough contact there, it was soft. But if you're saying there's enough contact to make that a red card, then Gundogan's must be a penalty. There was more contact on Gundogan than there was on Araujo. Make no mistake about that. Much, much more contact. There's a tangle of legs, nowhere near the ball. It's a clear stone wall penalty 
Why wouldn't you give it? And then, by the way, not only is it not given, but Gundogan gets booked, somebody else on the Barca bench gets sent off. This referee only has his cards. That's the only way that he feels he can officiate a game. And that is when you know you are a coward. You are not able to have authority in this game. You're not able to control the game as a referee should. You're the show. You want to be the big man. You want to show the cards. And that's what he did tonight. Every single thing. Card to you. Card to you. Card to you. It's an absolute nonsense. And it just felt like it wasn't our night. It just felt through many different stages of this game. As you know what? That was our one chance. We led in the game. We were looking good. Things were really looking promising. And then we just destroyed it all on our own. It wasn't even PSG that did it. We destroyed it on our own. And there were half chances. You know, Ferran came on. Jao Felix came on a bit later. You look at this one here. Rafinha flashed is one wide, you know, there was a few moments of magic that could have ended differently, Lewandowski by the way, look at this here, space opens up for him, you know, there's an opportunity here, PSG still looked a bit shaky at the back, Donnarumma still doesn't convince me, Lewandowski goes for goal, he's got so many players with him there, to his left, to his right, play one of them in, make it an easier chance, but he blasts it towards goal, and that is a big, big moment there, it's gone begging for Barca, and of course then in the latter stages, Mbappe, he's just camping on the halfway line, isn't he, he's thinking, okay, Barca are putting all their men forward, I'm going to wait here, wait for the counter, of course it comes, and Barca are just unable to clear the ball, it's like the defending from Barca that we saw back in January. They have five attempts, probably, of clearing that ball. They do not do it. And Mbappe makes it 4-1 to PSG. And it just feels... It feels cruel because I think we've actually done really well to get where we are. I think we did fantastically well in the first leg. I thought we set ourselves up well in the second leg. Things were looking good and I just can't believe it. I cannot believe that it's gone this badly wrong. And I feel like right now, just, just breaking down or something, I just can't really believe that it's all unravelled in this way. And, and, and I'm sorry, guys, I really am because tonight we've waited for it. We have wanted this game to come, you know, the nerves, the anxiety before it. I enjoyed the feeling. We all did. The build-up was absolutely incredible. Incredible. The fans outside the stadium, the atmosphere, and it's just all ended in this. It's all come down to one of the worst defeats I can remember in a long, long time. One of the worst feelings. It feels as though we've been robbed in a way here. It feels as though we almost robbed ourselves, you know, in some way to get the red card that we did. And I'm just, I'm just stunned by it. I'm absolutely gutted that we're not in the semi-final. I'm not, I'm not saying that I thought we were there. I'm not saying here that, that I was expecting us to be in the final four. But when we took the lead in this game, I think we were all thinking, this is looking good. This is really, really on for us. This is a moment that we can take. And we haven't done. And we've fallen down. And we failed, I guess. But it still feels harsh to say it's a failure. You know, we had it. We were there. And we've messed it up. So I guess what I want to know in the comments down below tonight, guys, is, you know, what, what do you make of this right now? What are your feelings about the game? What are your emotions? What are your takeaways? You know, did you think it was a guaranteed red on Araujo? If it was, should it have been a penalty then at the other end on Gundogan? Let me know about the ref down below. Let me know about some of the key decisions today from Chaffee as well. You know, the players that were out there. What do you make of this result? Where do we go from here? You know, where does this leave us now in terms of feeling, in terms of momentum for the rest of the season? Let me know all of that down below. I will see you soon. You know, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to be going away. I hope you guys aren't too, because we will have to talk more about this. I know we probably don't want to, but we will have to, because this is a big moment. It's a big game. Lots has happened, and there'll be lots more to come here on the channel. Thank you indeed, guys, for all of your support before the game, after it as well. We won't stop. We will keep fighting. We've got to get back up. We are getting closer. we just got to make sure that we find ways to get over the line, that we keep our heads in the biggest of moments. I will catch you all soon, but until next time. And as always, Vizca, El Barca!